Wow. I really wanted to share a word that the Father gave to me today, and I find it very beneficial to think on this year's topic, which is family. I'm pretty sure many of us have been through some things this year that made us doubt our position in God because of oppression and the attacks that have come with family. Whether it was financial, through direct demonic activity, and any other tool that the devil had to use against us. The busyness spirit, you know, being so busy that we don't even have time for family, where we lose our sense of place within that family. Isolating ourselves from our family to the point where the devil can magnify your loneliness and turn it into unhealthiness. Well, some of the scripture that God shared with me on this weight called family. 2014 is a year for breakthrough. But when we achieve breakthrough, we must identify what it is we're breaking free from. And I find it very interesting that in the middle of my own family attacks, that God would turn me to the book of Amos, chapter 1, 2, through 6, and continue on from Amos all the way. Let me, let me find my scriptures. Let me find my footing. Father, show me where I was. Just a moment. All the way through Amos chapter 9, verse 15. So, nine chapters in Amos. And then, that wasn't it. But to finish up with Isaiah. I'm sorry, Hosea. Chapters 1 through 3. And to go back... I'm flipping through my Bible, so if you want to get your Bible out, that would be great. It's just, it's just very deep. Because the story of Amos is where God's promising the punishment of the surrounding nations. So here is Amos. And the Lord tells Amos that for every three or four sins of each surrounding nation, what the Lord was going to do extending his wrath to those nations as a promise. And most of it was setting fire on those surrounding nations, destroying the walls and consuming the fortresses and explaining why. And many of us are going through some attacks right now. And those attacks are similar to the surrounding nations. So what the Lord is promising is the destruction of those nations because of a reason. And what that reason is, is their sin was unjustified and oppressed. And it was old. Old sin is people who know to do right and to change and they choose not to. Put in new wine in old wine skins. And as the scriptures move on, the scriptures continue to talk about the mountains and how to assemble yourselves at the top of the mountains, but that even those mountains would be destroyed because of the sins and that the altars and the grounds that were created would even fall down. So you really got to take your time and read this and get it for your, your own revelation just as I did. And the biggest story that stood out for me was when I got to the story of Jonah. And so many people remember the story of Jonah and how he was on a ship and, you know, then getting kicked off the ship into the ocean and how when that happened, then he was turned over into the, the belly of the whale. But the significant part that I found out about the story of Jonah and the whale 
was that Jonah was actually sent to a place and he decided to run from God. And when he ran from God, God allowed him to run. But where he ran, the land that received him or the boat and the people therein, the people that received him, something happened to them. And they knew that they were receiving a, a punishment because he was running from God. The people there knew he was running from God. And they asked him, where are you from? Where are you from? And where are you supposed to be going? And they cast him off that boat. And they sent him into the sea and they prayed that God would protect him. So they sent him away knowing that he was running from God. And that him being in their presence was causing them to suffer. Now when we turn to Hosea and we talk about the story of Hosea moving past that. Then we find out about how the Lord was talking and explaining how much... He he loved a woman and that that woman was a prostitute and how for a period of time he didn't dwell with her. But then after a while, his heart softened towards her and he began to love her. Moab began to love her anyway, even though she was a prostitute and was the story where he was told to love her despite her adulterousness. This is in chapter 3. Excuse me. <clears throat> chapter 3 verse 1. And it says, go and show her love again. She is in love with another and she's an adulteress. But love her anyway as the Lord loves the Israelites. And they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. And it says where he bought her out of her adulterous state and her prostitution. And claimed her. And caused her not to be a prostitute or to be intimate with any other man. And then it goes on to explain that the Israelites will live many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or stone. And afterwards will return and seek the Lord their God. And they will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. So this being the last days, God is interpreting something here in, in Hosea, even on through chapter four and five, where the explanation for why the suffering happens and then the restoration for the prostitute. What this means is once God accepts us and his presence is dwelling with us. He may send us out into the wilderness. He may send us on a mission. Deciding for us what we'll do. Because we've given our destinies over to him. One of the biggest revelations that came to me from reading Amos through Hosea. Was the idolatry of family. Have we put our family members. Or our own lustful desires to have the perfect family, the perfect financial situation, to have the right uh, sister, brother, mother, cousin. Have we created an idol in our family? Whether for some of us is looking for a husband or a wife or having the perfectly behaved children, the perfect job, the best looking body with the for the best looking mate. Have we committed adultery to God? Are we a prostitute? Prostituting our love for God is an excuse to create an idol for family. And I will tell you the answer to that question is for many cases, yes, but it's unnoticed. It goes unnoticed. And when God decides to reclaim you after being in that wilderness of adultery and, and idol worship to family. And God becomes the head and the husband to you. And becomes the core of what you stand for. He's going to cast out those nations of sin. 
and it may hurt so bad and you may seem like you're so alone but when you're alone you find yourself giving thanks praising God staying focused because God is the core of what you're doing and while the old things are passing away and they're falling off and the wrath of God is falling on those nations that used to have your attention that used to be everything you lived for and you couldn't find yourself living for anything else you couldn't find purpose with anything else if you didn't have that that image when God casts out that idol, he accepts you in the state of mind of being an adulteress and a prostitute of family. But he claims you with his love and the blood of Jesus Christ anyway. And redeems you. And shows you. And brings you to a place where you know without a shadow of doubt that the things that you have suffered and are suffering are coming to an end with a purpose. So, the challenge this year is to lay down the idol of family. To turn over the family into the will of God. To push for nothing outside of the will of God. And to continue pushing for the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible says, all these things will be added unto you. But we cannot continue to move forward claiming to be leaders. Claiming to be Christians. Claiming to love the Father. Claiming to be doing the creator's work and making an idol of our family as we do it. How many of us know that there are secrets about people that we do not know? And the better you are at keeping a secret, the better Christian you are. The more that people don't know what you're going through, what you're suffering, the better you are suffering for Christ. The more you strive to make an image of your family outside of what it really is, the better you are for the body of Christ. Well, I'm here to tell you today that the book of Amos and the book of Hosea speak against that. Those books say, if you make an idol, those idols will fall down just as though it was made of wood. If you put your trust and your faith in your family and what you expect from your family, then you have given all your trust, faith, and love to them. And they will, in human nature, let you down and drag you through pain. Betrayal, backstabbing, greed, selfishness, confusion. You open up the door for the devil to be able to enter in in many ways. But the moment you set your eyes on the kingdom of heaven... And your divine purpose in those people's lives. Then you can really begin to break the chains. Because breaking the chains is not from natural sweat. And natural cover up. And natural tears. And natural brow beating. And blaming each other. And pride. True breaking of the chains only belongs to the Father above. So we can only get to the Father through what? Through praise and thanksgiving and prayer. So I hope for the remainder of this year that as a corporate prayer and as a body of people that we will pray 
that the breaking of the idolatry of family will dissipate and be no more so that families can stay together and be proud of who they are and proud of the uniqueness of their family and remember the history of their family and understand the future of their name and their calling in God but that we won't dwell and be oppressed by our family but that when it comes to those things we don't take a natural approach but that we give it to the Father we edify God on that can we just edify God on that Father, I'm here to pray right now and do a corporate prayer for anyone who is listening to this message. That you would come into their lives, into the innermost courts of their heart's desires for their family. Open up their ears, God. Open up their eyes. Give them the wisdom and understanding to deal with family without making an idol, oh God. We repent today. For putting our family above you. By holding on to that peace of control. We cry out today for your, your salvation, your protection, your mercy, your grace. And nothing less but your love. That will come in and take us where we are right now. Loving us. Having committed that adultery and sin on you. Having prostituted our idol family in front of the kingdom of heaven. And gotten far away from your desire for us. Father, we pray right now that you restore every man, woman, child that has been without what they desired. Restore them with destiny and purpose, oh God. And clarity on what they are supposed to be doing. Renew relationships. And put appropriate boundaries between people. And guide us, oh God, to another place. As only you can. That as we ascend to the hilltops that you have claimed for us to Break through. That we stand united to break this generational curse of idolatry in family. In 2014, I rest in peace today. Your purpose has been restored. You have been accepted into the kingdom of heaven. And your name will last forever and ever because you are a priest and a priestess of the most high and where the father will take you is far higher than anything you can do for yourself so what we pray today oh God is that you challenge us to dig within ourselves and reveal to you in our private prayer closets. And in all honesty. Our hearts desires for our family. That we may turn it over to you. That you may bless it and fortify it. And set up the temple. And set it up oh God. That if you set it. That no man shall let it fall. But if we set it. Then we can let it fall. But Father, we turn it over to you today. We turn our families over to you all around America, all around the world today. We turn our families over to you. We remove ourselves out of the equation and we give you total control to break down the nations that surround your people with all fury and vengeance that is yours. And to refortify the city and the walls with your wives and your husbands on this earth. You reestablish the covenant that you have started, and your word says, Be 
behold, all things have been made new. And we believe this. And we claim this. And we speak out against every idolatry spirit that is trying to attack your priests and priests on this earth. We cry out, oh God, for your protection against these attacks. That you have a ram in the bush, a whale in the ocean, and a hedge of protection around us. And we claim for the generations that come behind us not to go through these trials. Though trials come on every hand, we still are praising, praising Him.